How's it folks? Welcome to a brand new episode of Away for Viewfinder. I'm Adrian Sog. And elephant in the room. First issue I ran into was there's no reviews. I couldn't find any review on this. On the forums, yes, but it wasn't really helpful. Though it just says, yeah, it works, you know, so that doesn't really tell you um, how good it works. So I thought, well, let me be the first to create a review on this guy and then we'll see. Then uh, hopefully this can help you in the future with perhaps investing in something like this and then inevitably we're going to go to um, Riedfontein and on the Riedfontein um, there is going to be the road there has lots of corrugations and bumps and stuff like that we'll see if it can handle the punishment we're going to be going off road so we'll see how durable this guy is handling the off road conditions as well in the back of the, the bucky and then in time somewhere in the future um, then I'll do another review explaining, you know, how is it holding up, you know, then we'll see um, if, if it's worth putting your money into this um, Because I know I mean lots of people are endeavoring to camp But it's it's expensive getting all the accessories you need and a cheap fridge cheap I, I use the term loosely um, Because it's 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 a quite a big investment the fridge is always a big investment and this one was five grand four ninety four triple nine um, which is very good for a price, very good for a 42 liter, but are you compromising? So without further ado, let's get into the unboxing and see what this guy looks like. First thing we, before we get completely deep into this, um, if you buy one, when, when we went to pick this one up, I saw one of the boxes with this thing laying on its side. So please be aware if you're going to go buy the fridge because you're buying this off the shelf at Checkers. Check that you find one that's been upright. Because the moment this thing is laid on its side, the compressor, that oil and everything goes everywhere. It's not good. So um, I told the staff there that they should pick this thing up or pick that fridge up and put it upright because it's going to get damaged and yeah they're probably going to have a comeback on that one because I don't know how long that thing's been laying on its side so there is that risk because you are buying this thing off the shelf but yeah let me show you what it looks like around the edges Now for the big moment, let's see what it looks like on the inside. Sure. Nice sturdy chain here. I don't know if I like this idea though, but I mean, at least it's steel and not plastic. So here's your accessories. see what this looks like so yeah this this is not bad it's 42 liter at least you've got this tray here which is probably not as cool as this one so this side you can keep vegetables and stuff like that and I like that it's a bit wider we had a 40 liter snowmaster and this space was very small you, you, you couldn't really put much in there so having a bit more space here helps and then this here as well um, it's a bit lengthwise longer which means you're not the stuff at the bottom will be easier to get to than having a long narrow upright okay so this is what the lid looks like there is a seal here a rubber seal squishy rubber seal which probably there's a lip here so it's probably squeezes over that lip and that's important that it can seal properly the lid what does it sound like when it closes yeah that's a nice clunk which means it's there we go all right that's nice the overall feel of it it, it feels solid um, it, it's really hard to say you know I can't really fault it in the sense that you know you could say just by looking at it as it is that it's not durable because 
it solid, certainly feels solid. So um, I, I'm pretty sure this this could take the, hand, the handle the the punishment. Um, like what can I say? You know, being knocked and bumped and stuff like that. But our main concern will be the compressor. Will the compressor be able to handle that? So that's going to be the the big million dollar question. So let's go through the accessories and see what there is. Right. So apparently this guy can be plugged into AC and DC. So the first test we'll be doing is to do the DC of the AC test and see how that goes. Um, run it up to temperature, see if it gets cold because this is one of the first things you do when you get it is to make sure that it, it actually works. So here's a warranty card and then your instructions. Yeah, so here's an English one as well. Alright. So user manual, adapter, refrigerator, everything's here. Okay, I'll take the time to read through this and then I'll run you through it. Okay. At first, let's switch this guy on and see how it works. Um, right, so here's your AC. I'll probably take this off and put a uh, Anderson plug on here um, because this is, I mean, where is this going to go? All off-roaders these days run off the Anderson plugs. Then we've got the box. So this is for when you plug into AC. You plug this into here which we'll probably be using right now when we'll plug it in and see how it goes. All right, let's go see if this guy switches on. All right, so how this guy works. Um, when you switch it on, um, the display, when you push the power button, you press and hold it, then the power, uh, the temperature inside will be displayed. Um, the power will also come on. Now, when you switch this thing on initially, this power will be red. This LED uh, will be red. Um, don't be worried. The fridge will not come on for at least three minutes, three to four minutes. Um, I think it initializes and the compressor is slowly working its way up and then around. That's what I'm assuming it does. Um, but it doesn't, you'll, you'll not hear the compressor running immediately. So. Um, that's the initial one. I've switched it on and off now and every time now I switch it on and off it goes on and off So that's not a problem. You have your eco and your max So in max mode the LED will be red and in eco mode the LED will be blue. Ah green, sorry So here's your temperature setting up and down So in order for you, you can choose which you want to see Fahrenheit or Celsius by pressing here So it'll show you in Fahrenheit or in Celsius and if you press it again it goes into eco mode and you've got high power mode so if you want to keep it in high power mode you just select it and you leave it and it'll stop so then the compressor will run it'll start cooling down to whatever temperature you set it at um, I've set it now to minus 20 um, and yeah I just switched it on now so we'll see how it goes let me see if I feel something yeah it's cool already on the inside so yeah, now I'm just going to leave it for an uh, hour or two and let it run up and see how it goes. I don't feel it getting cold on the outside, which means insulation is not that bad. But let's see in an hour what happens and we'll take it from there. Right, so here we have high, medium and low power switch. So what this means is your that's your... 12 volt protection so when you plug this guy into your your dual battery system or into your car it will set the cut in and cut out temperatures it's got a high setting a medium setting and a low setting now this is to prevent your the fridge running your battery completely flat now i'm going to read to you what those settings are so in low mode the cut out will be 10.2 volts so when the voltage in your battery drops down to 10.2 volts the fridge will cut out which means it won't continue drawing the the um, uh, current from the battery. In medium mode that's 10.7 and high mode that's 11.7 volts. So in other words you want this thing perhaps on, 11, uh, on high because by having this on high it'll cut out much earlier so you it will won't use all the usable battery power that there is available it will cut out a lot sooner. So 11.7 is, is a good place to start if You've got an older battery you'll probably realize that this 11.7 will get there rather quickly 
then maybe you can set it to medium or then inevitably to, to low. So that's what it's for. It's not for running the fridge on a higher, uh, higher power level or not. That is done by your eco mode and your max mode settings here in the front. So yeah, um, we've been running now for two minutes and it's already dropped three degrees. So in an hour we'll see how far it got within an hour and if it gets to um, minus 20 within an hour at least. Um, but so far no complaints, I've not heard any funny noises or anything like that. The um, compressor is no louder or no softer than any other compressor we've owned before. Um, sounds more or less the same, you can hear it, but it's not it's not that loud. Like if it's in the back of your, your car, in your inside your sedan, you will not hear this thing run. Um, definitely not. So, But I'll put the camera close, this microphone close to the motor, then you can hear what it sounds like. So it's not noisy at all. But yeah, let's check in, check in in an hour and see where it stands. All right, so less than 25 minutes in and it went from 24 degrees to minus 20 degrees. So it's hovering. Um, the compressor just switched off, so I got quite a surprise. That was really quick, but obviously we don't have anything inside the fridge, so that would be why it got to the temperature so fast. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a tray or two of um, ice cube holders, put some water inside and then see how long it takes this guy to freeze that. Um, and yeah, in the process we'll see how often this guy switches on and off. Um, that would be to maintain the temperature. It just switched off, it's a one minute and it's gone down to minus 18 already. So we'll see where it switches on and off um, and monitor that and then I'll we'll see how that goes I'm just interested to see how quick it'll freeze the water but I'll put a couple of other things in there as well so that it it kind of has to work you know in goes two liter tap water oh, 1.5 liter tap water and uh, two standard camping um, ice blocks holders or ice block makers or whatever all right so there we go um, the time is now 137 um, we'll check in an hour how they feel and then i'm going to leave this guy running to maybe five o'clock this afternoon and then we'll have a look and see um, but I'll be checking intermittently to see what whether it's working and how cold the water is and how quickly more or less the um, water freezes in the ice cube maker so yeah let's get into that all right so it's been another 45 minutes I've been monitoring the cycle it seems like this guy when you've set it to minus 20 a with the moment the compressor will switch off when it gets to minus 15 the compressor switches back on again and so it cycles um, it stays on quite some time um, it's not like a quick switch on and switch off to, to maintain the pressure which is after the temperature which is not bad um, but we will see on the long term what it does all right so it's five o'clock let's uh, see what's going on here huh. look at that The water is basically most frozen. Sure, okay. Let's look and see what the ice looks like. Okay, so there's still water there, but it's generally frozen. So, um, it's safe to say this guy does his job pretty well. Um, three hours, almost frozen. Um, icicles. I even put the coke in there for good measure. Um, but everything's crispy cold. So, yeah, I think give this guy another two hours or so, then everything inside will be completely frozen. So, 
Yeah, I think for all intents and purposes the test run went well. We will now see what it does on the flip side while we're camping. So let's get on the road and get to Rietfontein. Right, so final thoughts. Well, in total, we've covered just under 700 kilometers on our trip to Rietfontein. Um, we've covered heavily corrugated gravel roads. We've done a 4x4 and we've done asphalt. So we have done a combination of, of surfaces. And so far, the guys did the test of time. Um, there was no change in temperature. It kept its temperatures. Um, there was one of the nights I actually switched it off. Um, to check the insulation because um, we had, uh, I think I had it at minus 2 degrees um, on the way, no, minus 5 degrees on the way there and then when I was that side I put it to minus 2 degrees. The next morning I opened this guy up to, to, to get some water to test to see how cold it was and it was still very cold. I mean you could still, that would still satisfy your thirst on a very hot day. So. Um, the insulation on this guy is quite surprising. Um, to, to be honest with you, I had a snowmaster and the snowmaster overnight lost all its temperature. Its insulation wasn't as good as this one. So um, it was an older snowmaster, but still, you know, um, shows you the level at which this guy is. Um, temperature wise, like I said, it, meant it kept its temperature. We did the 4x4 route. There's lots of bumping and all that stuff. And as you may know, um, the compressor in the back um, is normally the one that takes the punch and we did some hectic inclines um, going into the river and getting out and then lots of pumps going through the river itself and, and this guy is still running strong so from my perspective I'm, I'm very happy with it the stuff like the ruggedness of it the, the handles the door the way it opens and closes all this seems like it was thought out properly it wasn't this is not a, a quick job just to get something out there. They, they actually put some thought into it. So um, it will still remain to be seen over a couple of months what this guy does. So my critiques, my only critique is the display. Um, they went through all this effort to design the, the, the box itself to be sturdy and solid, um, yet they make the display look cheap. Um, they could have put a little bit more effort into that into the design of that and yeah but it does its job it has the functions that you need i would provisionally recommend this fridge um, as a camping fridge for for people who, who, who go camping but overlanding it still remains to be seen i can't i can't uh, vet it now um, not having done an overlanding route with it yet having it run through uh, a couple of days worth of proper punishment and seeing what it does and then over a period of time as well so from over any perspective remains to be seen but as a, from a camping perspective i think this guy will definitely do the job all right folks so there's it thank you so much for tuning in thank you so much for uh subscribing liking commenting down below i really appreciate that and i hope this you found this video helpful because i, I could not find anything on the internet doing a proper review on this guy giving you the initial unboxing and all that stuff so that you can at least get an idea and a feel for if you are in the market for a fridge as uh, to use this as a, as a possibility and yeah so i hope this was helpful and uh stay tuned i've got some more stuff coming from Rietfontein and i can't wait to share that with you guys but anyway until next time happy 4x4ing